All right, welcome back. Let's continue with our discussion about the safety of children, whether at school or in society. This is, of course, after two boys died in a shooting in Davidson. On the very first day of the new school year, the deceased pupils were from the Lisiba Secondary School in Davidson. And the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education, Bungiwe Mbingo Kikaba, has condemned the violence. But the boys' families say the deaths were an accident. Uh, let's go back now to the spokesperson of the Gauteng Education Department, Steve Mabona, who is joining us uh, virtually, as well as the General Secretary of the National Association of School Governing Bodies, as well as Satus Polani Fagute. Uh, Mr. Fagute, um, earlier on, I had actually asked Ndata uh, Mabona about that debate around what we do in terms of safety at schools. What kind of mechanisms can we introduce in schools uh, to make sure that um, pupils are safe, as well as teachers, in fact? For instance, those metal detectors, a lot of South Africans were saying that would be wrong. What do you think? Well, um, I, I am not certain, we would not be certain as to um, what, what would be so wrong in terms of um, uh, making every attempt to ensure that our school... Remember, Master Hoye, we're not only talking about uh, just the, the two learners that we've lost in Davidson, but we're also recalling the same context that we also lost a, a general assistant uh, in Soweto. Now, that is an education worker that we lost in the system. And this is not necessarily uh, the first of such instances. You referred earlier to the Northern Cape, or it was rather the Northwest incident, whereby a teacher was actually uh, uh, fatally uh, uh, wounded by a learner. The same happened in Northern Cape uh, some uh, two or so years uh, ago. And we see this happening quite um, uh, consistently in different forms. Not, not all of these incidences will actually end up with fatalities, but in different forms. We talk of cyberbullying, et cetera. But what we are saying also, uh, Masiho, is that we would love to feel um, as safe as possible in our work environment as professionals. This is part of the motivating factors that even ensure that we can recruit even more personnel within uh, our system. But now the other issue that we need to look into is about how collectively, as a nation, how do we deal with our collective psyche? I am sure that my fellow panelists here, Dr. Mantaganya and Mabona here, would agree with me that we are still living in a country where by myself, when there is um, community members doing about uh, potholes, uh, they go to the school to close down the school. Uh, you shut down the school. You limit access because you are calling it a shutdown. You start with the school, you leave the tavern next door. It tells you that we certainly have got a particular paradigm shift that is necessary. It tells you that we need to really have this particular conversation as a nation so that we can make sure that all of us collaboratively, by the way, we work towards some of those, those strategic objectives that we want to see and to ensure that our schools, MSF, our schools should be safety havens. That is why as such, we even have got what we call the IMS school fan campaign, whereby we are mobilizing all the stakeholders to A, take responsibility, be accountable, but to encourage everyone to play a role towards uh, making sure that our schools are safer. Mm. Uh, Mr. Fagote, let me just stay with you for a little bit. You've been reprimanding, for instance, the SGB as well as GDE in terms of their roles that they could play. But uh, teachers as well um, have a huge role to play. And I know that the argument is that it cannot always uh, just be teachers, etc. But they also have a huge role to play in terms of their own safety and the safety of pupils. We've heard, for instance, if we, uh, uh, you know, set aside or uh, to put to the side the issue of uh, weapons uh, being ca coming through to the school. But also there's that rule that came into effect not so long ago by the Basic Education Department, for instance, where teachers need to um, tell police when there's been, uh, you know, a little child who is now pregnant, whether it's by a community member or sometimes even themselves. So, you know, teachers also have a huge role to play in the safety, um, again, you know, against violence for pupils. You're, you're absolutely correct, Masiko, and we also acknowledge that role as well. Because remember that at some point, uh, there's, there are also issues of classroom management, uh, how we try to get that particular element so indeed, we are a major stakeholder within this particular value chain of, of, of education, and we are aware that we are also part of the system. For instance, when we talk about early warning mechanisms, you know, sometimes when violence happens, uh, it, 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 the, the, sometimes they, they are even preceding events or change of behavior, etc. And educators are also well placed uh, to particularly be able to pick those out. However, I must say, for the reality of the matter 
is that uh, our education system or rather our educators, education workers are extremely stretched in this country. That is why I believe that we're probably one of the few countries that even rely on extra classes on weekends, early mornings, etc. Uh, to push the curriculum because of the limitations that we see within uh, the particular space. So what that therefore means, uh, Maseho, is that we, we, we become overwhelmed as education workers. We become overwhelmed by some of the responsibilities that are expected uh, from us in particular, especially the element of, um, of, um, of um, a, a, a discipline. But now, last, Masiho, one of the most common denominators of the most efficient education systems in the world is parental involvement. And I'm happy that even the demand Daganya kept on referring to this particular issue. It is parental involvement. But then now, equally... We want to make sure that, for instance, there, there, there are several instances where I would receive reports of a, a, a parents meeting being called. When a parents meeting is called, you would actually have uh, more teachers and education support personnel in that meeting more than the parents uh, themselves. We receive those incidents quite uh, or, or those reports quite regularly. That the Matagani knows that when there are SGP elections, would even work together to make sure that we profile the messages, etc. So let us let us table that point very clearly. That let us take responsibility. Let us increase our parental involvement and let all the communities really assist us. Because as educators, we really do get overwhelmed, and we would want to have a safe environment to work in as well. All right, let me give uh, all of you about a minute, 30 seconds to a minute each, just to wrap up your points. I'll start with you, Ndata Matakanya, because Mr. Fagute actually was talking about the parents um, and, for instance, this child in Davidson having access to a gun is obviously something that the parents had to look after, not the school or the teachers. So uh, your minute starts now, um, just your, your wrap up and also answer the question with regards to parents also. Can you, you are referring me? to me, Marcelo? I am. Yes, yes. thank you very much, Marcelo. Yes. Um, 2022, uh, National Association of School Governing Body refers it as a year of implementation. And hence, we are calling on the school safety summits all over the country at provincial level. And uh, we want also to support Satu because Satu also has that type of a campaign called I am a fan, I am a school fan. So I think uh, Satu will be very uh, critical stakeholder in that summit. Uh, also, the question of uh, uh, adopt a COP, uh, adopt a COP, uh, I think it also the subs will be a very critical stakeholder in that. But finally, we want to, I think uh, Steve will take this message back that uh, we want a budget specifically for school safety. Now the department must just make a budget, must talk to Treasury to give us a budget that is directed to schools so that we must seriously implement it. This year, year of implementation. No more violence. Yeah, you don't want right. to see violence. I'm, I'm very sorry more. about that. Your minute has ended. Let's go to you, Ndata Mabona, because Mr. Matakange, uh, you know, ma made allusion specifically to the department in terms of budget. Your minute starts now. Ndata Mabona? All right, it looks like we've lost uh, Dr. Steve Mabona, the spokesperson for GDE. Let's see if we can get Satu's Kolani uh, Fagude to quickly give us um, his thoughts. Your minute starts now. Um, th thank you very much, Masiho. And, and very quickly, I must say that I am very, very pleased that Dr. Mantagani is even reaching out to us to say that let us work together in the context of this uh, national uh, school safety forums. And yes, indeed, uh, as a union, as the largest union in the sector, we do have got our IMA school fan campaign. And like I said, Masiho, it is all about collaboration, collaboration, and collaboration. We are calling on NGOs, we are calling on the corporate sector, we are calling on law enforcement agencies, we are calling on uh, organizations of faith, etc., traditional leaders to say that let us work together. Let us all take responsibility. Uh, come in, support this particular campaign of ours that we're working very closely uh, with the NASGP, uh, COSAS, amongst others as well. But what we are saying, Emma Seho, that it is all about collaboration because, after all, education is a societal matter. Thank you, Emma
All right, thank you very much. Kolani Fagute, I'm not sure if Dr. Steve Mabona can hear me. He cannot say I was unfair. I did try uh, and give him the platform to wrap up very quickly for us, but he couldn't hear me. I think it's uh, network issues. Uh, but that was Matakanye Matakanye from the National Association of School Governing Bodies, uh, Satu's Kolani Fagute, as well as the GDE spokesperson, Steve Mabona.